Hi guys. So today we'll be working on different kinds of texture paste by craft angle. So I have nine texture paste over here that we'll be discussing one by one. But before even we get into the texture paste, I'll show you some of the materials that I'll be using. So this is just your regular spatula knife, which I'll be using to apply texture paste. Uh, now in mixed media artists, there is another famous tool, which is the spinner bear silicon brush. As you can see, mine is quite a lot used. Hence, there is no coating that's over here and our brand name, etc. is all gone. But that's fine. It still does the job. So it has this silicon end, which is used to apply texture paste. So you could use either. There are also plastic spatulas that come, but I personally have always liked the metal ones. So I have metal ones and then we'll be i have already created some swatches for uh, using some white and black paper so i can show you the differences now this paper that i'm using is uh, craft angles cartridge paper for white and for black i am using an old black cardstock that i had the advantage of this is it is quite thick so probably once i'm done doing swatching for you i'll probably use them as my atc card base so you know i'll be able to reuse them so these are the things that we'll be using and of course all the different kind of texture paste and i'll also be using some heating tool i have some bowls of water so that uh, you know i can dunk my stencils in them once i start using them also one important thing that i forgot is we'll be using these stencils these are all craft angle stencils however you know use what you have uh, we'll be discussing how you know different textures you get with different kinds of stencils and when you can use stencils and when not depending on what kind of texture paste are you using so the first texture paste that I'll be talking about is the most basic one which is clear gloss texture paste so this texture paste even though it looks white and bottle like so once it is dry it is clear in nature so it will look clear and the texture of course you get texture because it's a texture paste however once it dries the effect that you have is gloss to semi gloss so it is not matte in effect so let me just get my swatches for the white and black okay yep so when you open so i have kept like i got all the fresh pieces just to show you how they come and you know what all you can do to make sure that they have longer life etc so most of them are unused as of now while i'm showing them to you so these they come in a seal like so and as you know right i have already stressed this enough in my texture paste drying video etc that india is a hot country so whenever you are opening these seal try and keep the seal as is so that once you are done you can you know use this flap down the seal and then close the lid so that the moisture that goes inside or the air that goes inside you have minimum air going inside you know also whenever you are using texture paste as all the brand says that once you open it of course the more you use it the more air is going to stay inside so you need to make sure that once you start using them you use them don't like keep them in cupboard for a year or two and then go back and use them and then you may notice that most of the brands texture paste would dry that is because the air inside is reacting and it is hardening the gel so don't do that if you are using something use it don't just you know open it and then keep it so let me just open so as you can see it is super creamy inside you can see how creamy it is it looks like curd that is the consistency for the basic texture paste based on what textures you have the consistency will vary that we'll discuss once we come you know to each and every texture paste so i'll take some and i'll first simply apply them over here to show you how they retain their shapes etc so here you can see i have applied it over here with a peak and it's retaining its peak i'll show it to you on a black cardstock so it's easily visible Yeah. 
so see over here i have kept its peak and it's retaining its peak and then i am applying it in different textures and you can see you know it holds those textures so that is the primary goal of any texture paste okay again since it's just a minute that it's been applied and it's not dry yet i can still play around with textures so i can you know do something like this after applying and it creates all those textures see okay next i'll show it to you through a stencil so i'll take any stencil now with basic texture paste they are meant to give you different kind of textures be it through stencil or be it through anything else so even the finest or the minute stencils that you have the ones with very detailed work they will also work with your basic stencil which is sorry with your basic texture paste which is clear white and black so now i'll take some just clean my spatula on here okay and we'll apply it you can see how easy it is to apply okay now these texture paste can be used on paper of course canvas wood mdf glass metal plastic however if you are using them on smooth surface or any surface which has a lot of wear and tear so let's say you know if you are using it on a frame which you are not going to wash daily it is okay if you don't varnish on top of it you know because it will stay as is because there is a lot of less wear and tear however let's say if you are using it on an outside of a pot which you are going to wash daily then you cannot you know give away with varnish you have to do varnish on top of it because you need to you need to make sure that uh, because of the wear and tear the textures effect does not go away so that is what you need to take care of so it all depends on how frequently are you going to use that or how much wear and tear are you going to put on those products then products that you make okay so this is how it looks as you can see it is hold its texture or on the black you'll be able to see it however i can see the same pattern on white also so i'll show you uh, the detail in close up so just give me a second okay so i'll hold up so okay so do you see those ra raised edges of the texture here is what we created different kind of textures just using spatula and this is through the stencil oops i put my hand so yeah you can see the details of those dot stencil through the texture paste so i'll dry this and show you quickly i'll dry a little bit of it just to show you that once it is dried it becomes clear just to show you you can see over here wherever there were thin layers it has already started drying and now you can see clear gloss instead of white so that is how everything will happens once it is dry at the end of the video i'll put photos of all these um, you know all these trial pieces so that you can look at them once they are dry now for drying i normally like to let them air dry if it is not anything urgent now if i'm doing a mixed media piece which has a lot of layers then obviously you know i'll dry it intermediately so if you are using heat tool it can probably take you around 2 to 10 minutes to dry depending on how thin or thick your layer is if you are air drying it it can take anywhere from 10 minutes to i think couple of hours depending on how you know how big of a peak or how thick of a layer you are putting on the project okay and it also depends on the temperature or where you stay so if you are staying in a hot climate it will dry out faster if you are staying in a cold or humid climate like how i live in it may take more time so this is clear texture paste for you all so if i have to summarize it in um you know in a one sentence it is basically a texture paste 
which will dry clear it can be used to give you more details like how this stencil can give you it can also be used to give your regular textures which a painter does you know like doing this spatula kind of an effect it can also be used to create peaks like so now since this is clear you can definitely tint this with mica powders you can tint this with pigment powders you can tint this with uh, your sprays so there are many ways in which this can be tinted you can tint this with your acrylic paint chalk paints etc and depending on what you tint it with you will get different different effects so this is clear now we'll do white okay again we'll do the same thing uh, we'll do it on black and white paper so you can see the differences okay i'll just clean my spatula so again similar creamy consistency that you get and then we'll use another stencil as well so again this can work with a very detailed stencil or a less detailed stencil doesn't matter because it is of the basic family so this will work with any kind of stencils okay yeah so this is how it applies okay you can of course apply a thin layer of it or you can apply a thick layer of it i'll show it to you on a black paper as well okay so here you can see it holds its peak again doing the same thing which the clear one does however once it is dry you you will see that you know it will give you the white effect because it is a white texture paste i'll just apply a little bit more over here Now I'll take a stencil and pass it through the stencil. Again, the same thing. this is the white part show it to you on the black part again you can see till the time i don't put spatula on top of it it maintains its shape that is the advantage of using a texture paste that it should maintain its shape till the time you know i put anything on top of it now normally you will see that i put a lot of texture paste over here and i literally just scrape my stencil slightly because the more layer i put the thicker the stencil raised stencil effect is what i'll get and that is what i like on my mixed media projects you know you can see i'm not scraping a lot that is because i like the whole raised stencil effect that it gives okay now i'll scoop everything inside take the stencil I'll just dry the I'll just dry the thinner layers on the black paper to show you that you know on, you'll see that it dries white. So, yeah, I think the thinner layers are dry and you can see that it maintains its white color. And this is the raised effect that I was talking about. and you can see over here how much texture i have added from the sides right so we'll let this dry again the timelines remain the same for drying for all these texture paste they are same okay i'll keep them aside next is sand texture paste 
so your sand texture paste is similar to white texture paste however the difference is that uh, it has sandy like granules in them so it will mimic the effect of sand and this sand texture paste is white so you know you can definitely tint it using any of your pigments or sprays etc to give you that uh, color that you want for your project again the property of all the texture paste will remain same so they will stick to canvas paper mdf wood metal glass plastic all that i spoke about in my clear texture paste part so you know they remain the same so they'll work similarly i'll just clean my stencil i should have taken eight stencils and sat sorry but i did not think that far ahead so i'll we'll reuse it's okay they are already clean so what i do is normally as soon as i'm done as soon as i'm done uh, using my stencil i dunk them in water and by the time you know we are done with two demos it is already clean you can see i don't have to scrub a lot so the key to not scrubbing a lot of your stencil because you know many of our stencils are delicate so if you scrub it may happen that it may tear down so the key is to immediately put it in water as soon as you are done so we'll be using the stencil and we'll be trying out sand texture paste okay so again same bottle same packaging everything is same you get 120 by the way you get 120 ml of paste in all these bottles depending on which one you buy your rates will vary the basic ones are now as soon as i put my spatula inside you can see that this is more coarser in nature that is because this is a sand texture paste okay and it may happen that sometimes you may not just need to mix it a bit it may happen because of how long you know how much texture is in it it may happen sometimes so what i do is i just put my spatula inside and just do it like so and then i will take it out now looking at the texture itself you can say that this will not work with a very detailed you know because it is very grainy in nature i'm not sure if you can hear the voice but it is very grainy in nature so it will not work very well with your detailed stencil that is because it is supposed to give you that sandy texture and that coarse texture so that may not work with a very detailed stencil like so but we'll try still and you know it will not be perfect but nevertheless you'll get a texture so for this go with a bigger design rather than smaller design again it will hold its peak and everything that uh, is there as a part of your texture paste so once i apply it with spatula you can see it will hold its peak so over here on the left side i am applying a thicker layer and on the right side i'll apply a thinner layer however you cannot go extremely thin with this like how i went with gloss and um, white texture paste that is because you know it has like grains in it so it will not go very thin the thinnest it will go is like this okay so this is sand texture paste as you can see it is very coarse so if you are like doing a beach project for raisin or a beach mix media project or you know you just are a person who likes to give a lot of textures like a rust effect texture so you can definitely do some these kind of sand textures on your project or a canvas and then use a rust effect paste on top of it to give it even more texture and color and make your project okay so i'll pass it through this it's not going to be 100% because you can hear the texture right and i'll apply some on black okay so this is how it goes okay i'll put it back the flap and then close the lid okay 
Yeah. You can immediately see that it was not 100%. Like it still gave you the designs. It is much better than what you would normally expect out of a very coarse texture paste. It will still give you those circles. But those circles are not perfect. They are uneven. So it will give you a more vintagey kind of a look if that is what you are going for. Okay. And we will... Like, So you can see that over here the lighter layers have started drying the the one which had less texture the thinnest that I could find it has started drying and it, you can still see how coarse it is over here and once it dries it will stay white because it is a white sand texture paste and over here we have put thicker layers just to show you uh, you know it holds its shape etc once you put it there and then you can also get such kind of detailed design but they will not be 100% perfect but you will still get the basic shape okay so this is how it looks and this is how the texture comes out to be it's very grainy and sandy texture so i'll let this dry as well next i'll take paper now sand had a sandy kind of grainy texture to it so paper is completely different paper has real paper fibers in it so it will still hold its peak and everything that you get with white and sand however it is not at all grainy but it gives you a different kind of fiber kind of a look you will realize what i'm saying as soon as i'll open it so let me just first and then we'll open this paper texture paste okay. again you can see I don't open a whole lot of it I only open so that my spatula can go in because I don't want my paste to dry out now again this has a comparatively more stiffer consistency as compared to the basic ones because you know as I said it literally has paper fiber in it if you can see the paper fiber okay so before I put stencil let me just show you and it is comparatively more stiffer because the paper fiber you know you will need some energy to maneuver them because of what is inside it it becomes a bit stiffer but these are amazing to give textures do you see the peaks let me show it to you on a black paper so you can see how I'm applying over here it can be brought down to a thin layer as I'm showing you with a spatula and quite some energy however it will not be an extremely thin layer because of the paper fiber texture in it and this particular paste will definitely not work great with stencils it is primarily to be used as is uh, so I would never suggest that you use this particular paste with stencils because the paper fibers are comparatively stiffer and they will not be molded to a particular stencil design. So you will see me struggling to you know apply it through the stencil like how I am showing you here and the end result will not be great. So if you still want to use it through a stencil I would suggest you use it with a very uh, comparatively broader design like a circle or a square instead of using a detailed stencil like how I have done here still let's apply the paste through the stencil on both uh, white and the black side of it once you remove you can see most of it is already taken away by the stencil and only a little bit of fiber went through the stencil that is because a it is a very detailed stencil and b as i said you know paper texture paste you need to use it with a more broader stencil design rather than a intricate stencil design so now let us apply it on the black side of the paper so as I said you know sand texture I use along with rust to give it more grainy texture or a beach kind of a project similarly paper I use for you know when I want to show that fiber kind of an effect on my mixed media canvas I really like to combine these with paints and sprays 
to show that natural fiber and these look beautiful on a masculine project you know because it brings out that natural uh, texture on your project and if you combine this beautifully with neutral tones like grays blacks browns navy blues it will come out really good like oxford green so with those colors these paste would look really nice so you know depends on what you want to do now since i'm drying it you can see that as soon as it starts drying i'll show you uh, the thinner layers and of course at the end you will see the pictures of the project or the sample sheets that we created so as soon as it starts drying it dries white so of course you know you can tint this just like your sand white texture paste with any of your favorite mediums next up is rough texture paste now with rough texture paste the texture is going to be completely different from the graininess like a sand texture paste or the fiber look like uh, the paper texture paste you know with rough you will find it more like a granulated kind of a texture paste so it gives you that grainy kind of an effect however those grains are very different from the coarse sand like texture so this again you know it is the texture is of course very different from uh, when you compare it with the sand or the paper texture and how i like to use this is i like to use this in conjunction with my patina and moss effect paste because uh, it literally gives you that uh, grains kind of a uh, uh, texture and what i like to do is first i like to add this on my project and then i tint it on tint on top of it using patina or moss effect and that will add extra layer of graininess and extra layer of colors to it as well moss effect also comes really nice with paper so if you ask me i would combine sand with uh, rust effect paste to create that rusty effect i'll combine paper and moss effect paste to create that moss like texture and i will combine rough and patina to create a patina like texture on my projects so that is what my go to combinations are whenever i am doing a mixed media project however you know you do you whatever texture you feel is perfect for your project you can do it the whole point of this exercise was to show you the different textures and then you can take a call now as you can see over here the rough is comparatively much smoother and i'm sorry but camera did not catch the rough graininess in the texture however on the black part of the paper when i apply it you'll be able to see the texture of what i'm talking about that you know how grainy it is again since it is comparatively smoother just like sand it will come through stencils it will not be as uh, perfect as like in clear or white or black texture paste but you can still see it through stencils and you know it applies uh, through stencils unlike paper so it will give you like a rough edges on the stenciled image but it will still come through so you over here you can see how it comes through the stencil and uh, over here you'll be able to see the textures as well so it is more like a bumpy texture and now here i am applying it on the paper and you can see how it holds its peak and how it creates the texture etc so again the same thing i am doing on the black side as well so you'll be able to see it on the black paper so once i have completed drying on the edges where you know the layer was uh, thin you can see that it has dried white and you can see the texture over here in the close up on the black cardstock and also the peaks that i have applied that i was talking to you that you know it holds its peak just like any other texture paste and once it is completely dry i will of course be sharing the pictures at the end so you'll be able to see that so this is you know how the rough texture paste looks and over here i'll bring in close up the white photo as well and you can see the uh, stenciling has come out really well you know the detailed stenciling just like how it came through sand so all our texture paste work beautifully with stencil except paper that's the only one because it has lot of texture in it so i would not suggest that using through stencil 
Now the next up is gold texture paste. This is a newly launched uh, texture paste by us. This is just launched I think a couple of days back and I have already created the samples that I wanted to show you. So this is how it looks once it is dry. So this is how it looks on black. And as you can see, you know, it stencils beautifully. It is extremely creamy and it uh, stencils perfectly without any texture or anything. The next up, I'm showing it to you on white. Now, as you can see, it looks beautifully in contrast and it, it shimmers and shines. However, it has a very subtle shine and shimmer to it as compared to, you know, an extremely goldy texture paste. So this is a more of a subtle shimmer. And again, with gold texture paste, you are not going to use them on a complete project. You'd rather use it as an accent. So it's going to go a long, long way for you whenever, you know, you use a gold texture paste. So you'll be able to use it in many projects. Now the same thing, I'll show it to you on white and black. And we will apply it through the stencil as well as through the spatula so i'll start prepping my papers and here you can see that my lid is already open because as i said you know i have created some samples for gold texture paste and that is why my bottle is open so now i'll scoop some and show it to you so again you can see it's comparatively thicker as compared to our clear texture paste or white or black okay however it applies equally smooth so you can see how easy it is to apply through the stencil and trust me guys when I tell you it is once it is dry it is extremely shimmery right now you can see that you know it applies opaque and it actually looks beige kind of a color on the camera that is because of the nature of the gel since your gel is white when you know it is wet and once it is dry it will be clear that is why that white combined with gold texture gold uh, paste for a gold paste it will actually give you beige color and here i am showing you an old stencil that i had used however you can see that it has still left those gold marks that is because i did not clean it immediately so don't do those mistakes or your stencils will get dirty as i said you know these does stick to plastic glass metal etc so you need to make sure that you clean them immediately in a wet bowl as soon as you are done don't wait for them to dry up because once they are dry they are permanent so here you can see that they look more of beige but once they start drying they look similar to the samples that i showed you where they will be completely gold and shimmery that is because of the nature of the gel now i'm scooping some up for you to show you through the spatula to show you how they hold their peak and you know how they look through the uh, textures when you directly apply them like this is uh, a lot of artists does that so i know a lot of mixed media use it through stencils however a lot of artists do use them through spatula etc and for them the most important thing is how does it hold its peak how you know how easy will it be for me to create various effects through spatula etc etc so that is what i'm showing you here that was the whole point of doing those spatula textures with different texture paste and also passing it through the stencil for all those mixed media artists who normally use it with stencils or decoupage artists or furniture artists. So again, this will stick. This has the same properties as all our texture paste. So similar drying times and uh, similar properties. So they'll stick to MDF. They will stick to furniture, uh, wood. They'll stick to canvas, paper, metal, glass, plastic, all those things. So, you know, if you're a furniture artist and you like to have that raised stencil effect with this golden look on your uh, projects, on your furniture pieces, that can also be done. It can also be used on the decoupage project. It can also be used on your mixed media projects, acrylic paintings, canvases, etc. etc. So, again, all the bottles come in the same uh, variety. So, over here, you can see the difference that I was talking about that once it is dry, how golden it looks, and once it is wet, how beigey it looks, you know. So, this is the difference that as soon as it starts drying, it will become more clear rather than white, and then you'll be able to see the gold pop through. 
so this will this actually looks like uh, you know if you would have done embossing you would see that as soon as we start drying how embossing powder melts and it shows its true white color or any other color similarly as soon as i'll start drying my edges you will see the gold shining through on my black and white pieces and that is what i meant you know that as soon as the gel starts drying you will see the uh, color popping through so that is the gold texture paste for you again with all our texture paste all these texture paste come in a jar containing 120 ml of texture paste so here is the close up of the shininess as you can see on the right side or on the lower side where i have dried it is more shinier however on the top part where it is yet wet it will be more beigey kind of a color or opaque kind of a color on white it is even more clear you can see the bottom areas where i am highlighting all the colors it is like very golden and on the top it is still beige color because it is yet wet so that was golden texture paste for you all next up we'll be working on cement texture paste and again cement i'll show it to you on both uh, white and black paper so that you can see how it looks on both of them again it comes in a similar jar and i'll open it in front of you now cement texture paste the whole point of us creating cement texture paste was to create or to rather mimic that cement kind of a look that you know we want on our projects however with cement you can for artist especially you cannot directly use them on your canvas or on your paintings because it will add a lot of bulk on your paintings on your projects okay so that is why you would normally not use cement you can get away with them you being used in your diy projects however not on your paintings or your other projects so so that is why we created cement texture paste so rather than using cement directly which is not an art medium you are using a texture paste which is an art based medium which will mimic the look and feel of cement so if you are looking for uh, if you know you have a project where you want to mimic a cement kind of look now again i use this a lot on my tissue holder kind of a project that i want to do because it looks uh, the cement looks really classy it is very in these min these days in your interior projects in minimal designs so it looks really nice on that or you know if you have a painting where you want to mimic a cement kind of a look and that color and that uh, texture then you can definitely go for a cement like texture paste rather than you know using any other texture paste and then trying to mix the color and do all that this is already done for you now as i open the lid you can directly see that the texture is different than your typical white black and uh, white black and clear texture paste that is because this is grainy as the cement would be grainy when it is wet and this does contain those shades so you can see it's grain color similar to how cement would look when it's wet again just because it is a cement texture paste does not mean that you know you cannot pass it through stencil you can definitely pass it through stencil and it will also hold its peak so over here i am directly applying it through the spatulas just to show you that how easily it it can hold its peak and as you see that you know as i am applying it more on a flat side towards the right it will flatten out however it will not flatten out completely like a clear or a white texture paste that is because it does have some inherent grainy texture in it to mimic that of a cement texture so it will not be completely flat when you are applying it it will still have some texture in it and again it holds its peak beautifully you can apply texture to it with spatula or any other uh, texture medium that you are using it will apply beautifully through stencils as well but just like sand since it has some texture in it just like rough since it has some texture in it the stenciling will not be 100 percent perfect like your white or clear or black texture paste however it will still give you that beautiful color and beautiful texture through the stencil unlike paper
also at any point of time if you have any questions or any queries regarding our texture paste please feel free to comment down below and you know we'll be able to reply them we do check our comments regularly on our videos and we'll reply to them so in case if you want more answers and you have more queries we'll be happy to help so over here you can see how detailed the stenciling has come even though the texture is coarse and it is not completely creamy because of the nature of cement texture paste however it will still give you very detailed stenciling because this is a detailed stencil and it will not be 100% perfect because of the nature of the texture however it will still give you beautiful stencil and as you can see over here once I dried that the color becomes slightly darker than your cement uh, you know than what you applied when it was wet so that is how it looks like when it is completely dry on the left you can see that it is still light because uh, it is not completely dry and on the right hand side you can see that it has become more dark grayish that is because it is dried out so here I am showing you in zoom of how that whole texture looks you know in detail and on the right is how it will look once it is completely dry mostly the color will remain true to what you have applied but there is a slight cha change in the shade so that is uh, for the people you know who want the exact shade that is why i'm saying that while drying it will become slightly darker as compared to how you have applied it and that difference you'll especially see on white rather than black paper because black i mean the base is so dark that it honestly looks very similar so over here you can see on the left and right you will find that the shades are similar even though the left is wet and the right is dried so cement is again my go to whenever I want to do more of a home decor kind of a mixed media canvas or I want to do some monochromes or I want to do a masculine project if I want to do something more colorful I will go with white range of our texture paste depending on what texture I want and then I, you know I can tint them and color them easily so that is why I go with white now next up I wanted to show you the black texture paste so our black range of texture paste consists of two texture paste that is charcoal which is your basic or um, basic version of uh, texture paste so our white texture paste our clear texture paste and our charcoal or black texture paste so this is the most basic version of black texture paste and the next one that um, I'll be showing you will be the asphalt texture paste which is similar to sand as the name suggests you know it is an asphalt texture paste so it is similar to sand and it will be black in color once it dries rather than white since uh, you know there is no point of doing this demo on a black cardstock I have kept both of them I am applying both of them on a white cardstock and I have kept them side by side so you know you will be able to see the textures easily because on black it is uh, a bit difficult to show you the texture on camera so first of all I will try I will apply the charcoal texture paste for you all which is basic texture paste but black in color as you can see it applies easily it can come down to a very thin layer of texture paste as you know as you spread it and it can also give you that uh, peaks that you like which all our texture paste does so you can again maneuver it with spatula like how I am doing over here so I am just showing you how with spatula you know you can create peaks etc and then I will pass it through the stencil again can be applied beautifully through stencil without any effort and pressure holds its shape through stencils beautifully and once it is dry it will give you that rich dark black color Now I'll apply asphalt texture paste through the same stencil for you all. Now as the name suggests right asphalt you would have seen asphalt roads etc 
when you know in when if you are an indian so you would have seen the texture that those asphalt roads have so this is similar to that and it has a very sandy grainy texture to it and uh, it is similar to uh, sand however it is sometimes even more textured as compared to sand depending on how you apply it and again it will hold it will pass through stencils beautifully it will hold its peak just like any of our texture paste and of course because of the texture you will see that it does not give you that 100% stenciling it is rather a bit rough towards the edges so the circles if you see are not perfect and that is the beauty of this particular texture paste that is because it will give you that grainy texture through the stencils and it will give, not give you perfect stenciling so it will give you more of a rugged vintagey kind of a stenciling so if you are going for a more cleaner stenciling kind of a effect then i would suggest you go for with charcoal which is our basic texture paste and if you want to do more of a grainy looking textures along with more of a rugged lines through your stenciling and not perfect stenciling more of a vintagey kind of a project then you go with asphalt so here i have dried all the layers and you can see on the edges where i had applied thinner layers is where it is completely dry you can see how dark it looks it is extremely black in color once it dries and it literally gives you that charcoal finish this texture paste is slightly glossy in nature it is not going to be completely matte just to let you know also uh, you know the timing or the drying times of both these charcoal as well as asphalt texture paste is going to be very similar to what our other texture paste are so again this is what i wanted to show you these were all the different texture paste that we under craft angles have now um, as i said you know every texture paste is very different from each each one of them so if you are a beginner then i would suggest that you go with our clear white and black texture paste which are our basic range of texture paste and you know you can start uh, playing with different textures through stenciling and seeing how they how they look how you can combine them with chalk paints how you can combine them with our liquid acrylics how you can combine them with our liquid watercolors they can also be combined with acrylic paints you can combine them with our mica powders to create different different effects so you know you can play around and experiment with them and then you can probably move on to the more textured paste version once you know you get hang of what are the texture paste what is the different kind of texture paste if you decide that you want to go with more of a grainy texture then you can probably go with uh, sand texture paste or asphalt texture paste depending on whether you are doing a masculine project which will in involve a lot of neutrals and black tones or you want to do a more of a colorful project which will require a white texture paste you can also use um, paper texture paste to create more fibrous looking basic papers you can go with cement texture paste like how i am showing you here with more of a masculine project or a project which where you want to mimic a cement like texture you can definitely do that you can also use gold texture paste to add gold um, detailing to your projects now this gold projects would look these gold texture paste would look beautiful on a shabby chic projects or even on your vintage projects where you want to add hints of gold now and then as you can see they are super shiny so i would not cover my entire project with them i would rather use them as accent pieces like how i would use my wax on top of it or my gold acrylic paint so similar to that i'll use my gold texture paste which will add both texture and will give that gold effect to your projects so you know choose the uh, paste depending on what kind of projects you want to do also with texture paste as i said i like to combine sand texture paste with our rust effect paste to add more rusty kind of a project i like to combine rough with patina and paper with moss to create even more realistically patina and moss like backgrounds so once you uh, start 
you know getting making some swatches or getting your hands wet with those texture paste literally on your projects you will realize that what projects makes what paste makes more sense in your projects so depending on your project your paste will completely vary however if you are a beginner i would definitely say start with clear white and charcoal or black texture paste these are the basic set of texture paste so that was the video for today guys i hope it was informative to you and it was not too long and too boring i tried to concise and put everything in uh, in short as much as i could and you know still give out the maximum information to you all as i do with all my videos and i hope you like such kind of videos if you do do comment down below i would like to know you know whether you want to have some small short videos or you would like to have longer such kind of in depth videos as well and also if you have any queries of any of the texture paste please comment down below and i'll get back to you and i'll see you in my next video till then take care bye bye